Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. The third rule of Fight Club, someone yells stop, goes limp, taps out, the fight is over. The fourth rule, only two guys to a fight. The fifth rule, Fight at a time, fellas. Sixth rule, no shirts, no shoes. Seventh rule, fights will go on as long as they have to. And the eighth and final rule, this is the first night of Fight Club. You have to fight. So sometimes we'll teach in a chain, sometimes we'll just take a position and give three different options, right? Today is the, is the latter. We're gonna pick the position, top side control, and figure out ways to submit our opponent. It's not all gonna be, I start with the Americana, they straighten the arm out, I go into the straight arm lock, they go down, I switch, and I go to more, okay? We'll save those ones for different days. Also, we've already made videos and some of the players have seen it. So I like to kind of uh, keep it fresh, and even if we're doing kind of the same thing, throw a little bit of a variation in there today. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, can I have you this way? Okay, so now, Kata Gatami, arm triangle. Uh, in my Nogi classes here for the last couple weeks, my Nogi players, we've talked about this, right? A few different ways to do this. Arm triangles, first off. Arm triangles from the top can be very effective. I think of them as a slower choke. Sometimes you put people in an arm triangle and squeeze them and they tap right away. Other times you get people in an arm triangle and because of the nature of it being compressing from here to here and using their own shoulder to close their, uh, their arteries down, it can be a little bit of a slower choke, okay? But it's kind of like a dog with a bone. Once I get it, I'm not letting go of it often if I know I'm in the right position so I can look for the finish. So don't expect this to be like an X choke where they can hold it for three seconds and they tap, or an arm bar where they hold it for one second and tap. Sometimes this is a slower style choke, okay? So as long as we're aware of that, be patient with the katsukatamis, the arm triangles. First, what we're gonna do is our standard progression. I'm gonna elevate the underhook, I'm gonna go to the mount. But now instead of going to the mount and then letting go and then seeing what submission is available, we'll see if we can start to set up my mount submission starting from side control. Okay, it's not that hard. We'll just kind of stick with it step by step. So here I am here. I got my cross face, chin control, my underhook. Maybe I don't want to let go of this dominant cross face to pin the hands, knee ride the biceps, make the cross with my feet, have my head go forward to extend the arm and start to pick up Americanas, or if he straightens his arm, straight arm locks, and there's alternate finishes to straight arm locks. I can come over and put one knee here, one knee here, keep my legs driving down, create a fulcrum in the elbow, and then go to attack his arm. So it's not always just a straight arm lock from here. I can start to amplify by climbing over. It looks like that a one. really weird position. That one hurts the worst. First couple times I saw that, I was literally like, that won't work until I had it hit on me a couple times. I started doing it, it works, it's just odd. So there are ways that we can trap this arm and attack this one. Sometimes, let's take the arm trap out of it now. Sometimes I'm running my standard pathway where I'm switching my hips, reaching around, looking to go Americana, and he straightens his arm out. Cool. It's hard for me to pull this back down. So when people use this defense to the Americana, I'm simply gonna go with the flow. As he straightens his arm out, I'm gonna hook the head, come underneath, pull him up, and I'm literally gonna use my four fingers on the other side of his head, I'm gonna drive his bicep to his ear, hook the head, stay low, and do the same path where I don't step over and allow him to catch me in half guard. I bring my knee from the hip, up the chest here. Now Bill can't trap my foot, and I'm gonna come and take my mount. I do not want to give up any space between his bicep and head. So what we're gonna do now that I've brought in one arm up, I'm gonna go two arms. Some people will even cup their elbows here for a minute, get in a position that they need to. So I'm gonna trade off. Arm is trapped, arm is trapped, and I can grab my own elbows and cook him here if I want. When I'm ready, I need to take my original arm that trapped, take that out. I like to hook here, in gi or no gi, I'm gonna grab right at the very back of the triceps. My other hand's gonna come out, C-clamp the elbow. Now, I don't necessarily wanna push this up because I wanna choke him with his own arm in a second, so I want it down coming across the throat. So after I make my transition, go two, C-clamp the elbow, I'm just for a second gonna relieve pressure, bring his elbow down, and shove it across his jaw. The second I can, I'm gonna get my head to the outside and drop it as low as possible. Here's how you know it's too low because you're going into the mat. If it's on the mat, it's totally fine. So I'm gonna shift the elbow, drop my head down low, I'm gonna use my head like a third arm to keep it low and drive skull to skull. Now there's lots of different configurations I can do with my hands to try to finish this. 
But if I'm up here, he could he could oopa and bump and maybe take me this way or that way. So once I get into my arm triangle, I'm now gonna go to knee on belly, lay down directly beside. I don't wanna be like this. I need to lay totally flat down on the mat, hip to hip, shoulder to shoulder, skull to skull. Skull is low, I'm driving into it. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna try and find under his neck with my shoulder. So if I'm up on his jaw, I need to drop my shoulder down, kind of wiggle it around to find the right spot. I usually prefer the hand that's on the cross face to be down. Some people will come up here, but you can't see it. It rolls the softer part of my arm into his neck. So palm down, I wanna try and get my left elbow, if it's not here, to push the ground. I'm low and tight with my skull. I'm gonna get a gable grip and keep this elbow nice and high. Lay down flat, push skull to skull, and start to drive my shoulder into his throat, flex and squeeze. And it might take some time. I might have him trapped there. It could be 10, 15, 20 seconds <coughs> at a match with two kids I was refereeing yesterday. Kid had the other kid here for two minutes before he tapped out. So it's very difficult to counter when somebody gets a full locked in. All right, all that talk's gonna look like this. We're gonna use our standard underhook to get to the mount. Once I'm here, I'm gonna cup the skull, two elbows. I can start to pummel, skull low and tight. I lock it up. Now I uncommit from the mount and lay down right next to it. Totally flat, try to drive my left elbow to the mat. My head stays low and tight. I start to flex, squeeze, and look for the finish, okay? Uh, let's show it from a little bit of a, uh, show it from a different angle so they can focus on the elbow. Grab the head, get ready to make my switch. Tighten it up and close the gap with my skull. Lay down and try to keep my left elbow, if it's flared, drive it to the ground. Just pull it tight, skull to skull, Start to flex, squeeze, and see if I can compress the tissue from Bill's armpit all the way up to his neck. Okay? This one, feel around. It's your first day doing arm triangles. I'll come around if you need some help, but if they don't, they don't tap right away when you start squeezing. Readjust your shoulder, keep your elbow low, keep the pressure. Skull to skull is important. Ready? One, two, three. Cool beans. So, luckily, this one usually goes by a little bit shorter because a lot of when I explain the Katagatami arm triangle, direct translation is shoulder hold. So, you guys know if you look it up, you're like, it's not arm triangle. <laughs> They'll call it a shoulder hold um, in the traditional language Japanese that they brought it. So, if you're here talking about Katagatami, it's, it's arm triangle. Okay. Now, we're still going to do an arm triangle. We're just going to set it up from a different position. There are things I can have you about this way, kind of hit face the Cool. There's many different things we can do to submit our opponent, right? There's things I can do to this arm, there's things I can do to this arm, there's things I can do to the neck from side control. Um, we've talked about lots of them before. Baseballs, paper cutters, bread cutters, whatever you want to call it, Americanas, Kimuras, straight arm locks. There's ways that I can isolate this arm. I can do shin and arm bars. So there's side control is a beautiful position because I can control my opponent. I can submit or I can advance, like knee on belly or to the mount if I'm looking at points or for better position. There are also kind of other ones that we can do. I can involve safety net to trap the arm and come over. Lots and lots of different submissions I can do today. Let's focus on one that's kind of considered in the upper realm of like fundamental techniques. Yes, it is a fundamental finish, arm triangle. However, what we're gonna do is, you ever have a friend when you're a kid go, I can count to 100 fast when you one, two, skip a few, 99, 100. <laughs> you ever heard that? This is what we're gonna do. This is the one, two, skip a few steps. Instead of going to the mount, trapping the arm and then uncommitting from mount, we're gonna see if we can run a faster version of this, okay? This works at all levels. You just gotta be good at setting it up. So let's start. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm in here, controlling the chin. I've got my underhook. This time, instead of either attacking the Americana first, he straightens the arm out. I use that to transition. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna start working on trapping this arm with my head position before I basically cartwheel to the other side, okay? No gi players, we did this the other day, right? Then I saw you use the exact same thing in a live roll the next day and finish it. So even if we haven't had a lot of reps at this, we can kind of guide people here. So here I am, side control, chin, nice pressure, knees in the right spot, I have my underhook. The arm can usually only be in a couple of different positions. Bill's usually trying to fight to a throat frame so he can start to get his frames in, shrimp, or work to different positions. This is especially effective, just like we've talked about this arm being in, where it should be most of the time when they have it here. It's an easy transition for me to hit my Americanas. There's a couple different things we can do from here. I can also go with an easy transition to feeding my head for an arm triangle and then cartwheel over the other side and finish it. So while their arm is in, which is what they should be doing, they feel safe there. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm putting pressure, I've got lots of chin control. I can get his elbow to flare a little bit, I don't have to. I can also <clears throat> just come down C-clamp or I can make my monkey paw. And what I wanna do is again, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a hard time doing this with my throat. Instead of covering the elbow, I wanna get to the bottom. The bone here is the humerus. I wanna get to the very bottom or the top of the elbow, however you wanna explain it. 
bottom of the bone. While I'm keeping his arm trapped, if I just try and push his arm through, um, all I'm doing is pushing the blade of the forearm to my throat. So once I set my hand up, I'm gonna buck my head up real quick, push his elbow where? Low. I don't want it high on his skull. I want to push it across his throat in a perfect world. So I'm gonna push it across, and now guess what I'm gonna do with my head? I'm gonna drop it low and tight. Use my head here. I can post my hand if I want. Some people will grab the pants. All I'm gonna do now is I don't wanna step over. Bill can catch me in a half guard. I want to cartwheel over the top. Lay down, fix it, drop it, squeeze it, hip. I'm driving into him the whole time with my body as I'm forcing my elbow. Here, head low, skull together. Why do I keep mentioning skull together? Because if I let space lapse here, Bill slaps his hand to the mat. No more arm triangles. This is why we keep a good skull connection as take away the counter. Okay, so two more times at medium speed. Here I am, he's got a throat frame. Everywhere you should be, I'm gonna set my arm up. Head low, come over, and there's different ways that I can fix my hands here. Preferably, I would try to avoid the S grip and go with the gable, or if I'm tight enough and I just can't finish, I can slide to a rear naked, but I don't want my hands in between. If I go to the rear naked choke finish, I want on the outside of my head, here, now I can keep my skulls together. Flex, squeeze, use the shoulder pressure. All right, uh, let's go one time from this angle. Yep. He's got his throat frame in, I'm having a hard time. Fight's over. So this is a much quicker version. If you didn't get enough finishes on kind of the squeeze and the finesse, now you do just a different set. Okay, six minutes for this one, we'll roll. One, two, three.